my dear friends, we, we have a problem. When, when we look at the state of things, not, not in the world kind of way, but uh, only, but also in our like personal lives, we can realize that there is something that's not quite right. And by this, I mean that history keeps repeating itself. Uh, for example, I was born in the 60s, and I grew up listening about this conflict in the Middle East. And uh, my children are also being raised listening about the same conflict. And by the looks of it, so will my grandchildren and their grandchildren. So uh, we need to take the hint here. Something's not right, something uh, uh, we're not learning. And even though, I mean, we have so much knowledge, we have accomplished so much. We have this amazing technology. We have, uh, oh, we've been to the moon, we've been to the bottom of the ocean. So we have all this knowledge, but uh, somehow we're not understanding it. There's, there's a big difference between knowing and understanding. And knowing is about perceiving particular events in time. And understanding, on the other hand, is about how we relate those events. And we can extrapolate by abstracting and then take that into other contexts. And for that, we need a process of thought. So that's, I think, where the problem resides. We're not, uh, we're not thinking. I, I guess anybody here with uh, teenagers at home will be very familiar with the phrase, you are not thinking right. And uh, it's a, a little bit what's happening to us. So why, why is it that we're not thinking? What's, what's happening? And th the answer is pretty simple, actually, and is that um, thinking hurts. It hurts when we think philosophically, when we follow a path of thought all the way through, and we think freely, we run the risk of shattering our own beliefs. What we believe is true. What uh, we think uh, is, is already the answer. So this leaves us into this void that is very scary. So we are very afraid of jumping into it. And the only problem is that in order to get to the other side, we need to go through it. So um, th this, is, this is actually a problem that's the root of all uh, fanatism and racism and all fundamentalisms not only religious, but also political and scientific. So how, how do we break this uh, vicious cycle? How do, we, how do we get out of this? Uh, I believe that people can change. And I believe that people can change through one single experience. So I, I actually only uh, began, I, I began my art career only 10 years ago, at the age of 37, which is also like a jump in the void, but I'm here, I, I survived. And uh, it took me a few years to get all my marbles together and, and create this uh, exhibition, this, uh, tailor this experience, uh, which is aimed at being able to change just a little bit. It, it's just, uh, I'm not going for the full enchilada here. It's just um, trying to, uh, teach the fact that we can change our point of view. It's very simple. And uh, this is, uh, let me sh uh, take you a little bit through it. It's called Limon Partido, which uh, in Spanish, in, in English, is half a lime. And it doesn't make any sense here, but we Mexicans, we have this crazy relationship with lime. If you, any of you drink beer, I guess you, you will know about it. So we, it makes a very nice metaphor. Because when, when uh, you split a lime in Mexico, it means that, like, that your friends are coming over. If you split a lime, some, there's, there's a party, even if it's between you and yourself. When we split a lime, we're partying. It's, and and it's, about, it's about the juice, you know? When you, when you want to squeeze the juice of a lime, you have to split it, and then you, you have to share it. So it's the same as life. When we're born, we're born into this world where we're already sharing it with everybody else. So this is about how, how to get along together. And the way it works is it's based on six uh, principles, six actions that make uh, an arc. And they, they actually make this uh, constructive cycle. And these actions are tied 
to six metaphors, visual metaphors and, and sound metaphors. And they're in the form of games. But the games are not, these are not the games that children play. These are games that adults play. These are social games. And, and children see these games uh, in an aspirational way. For example, children, they, they want to play billiard at some point, right? So uh, adults, of course, we, we know everything, right? So when, when an adult comes to the exhibition, to, uh, to the experience, they come to this leveled playing field as, with children because they're both in a situation where things are bigger than them and they're flabbergasted. And that's exactly the feeling I'm going for, because at that point, you're ready to learn. And, and, and that's when, that's in that point, everybody's ready to, to be guided. And that's when the guide comes. So there's a facilitator that takes uh, the visitors through the experience. It's, it's about an hour. And each game lasts for about 10 minutes. And they're all played in a dynamic, in a group dynamic. So it's, a, it's an interaction that's not the typical interaction we have with the phones. It's an, that, an interaction that we have uh, as a group. So let me take you a little bit through it quickly so you see how, how it works. Uh, this is the first thing you encounter. This is a dice, and it's, it's a monolithic dice that where the spots are actually uh, speakers. And what happens in there is that you have 400 proverbs from all around the world. And once you realize that ancient wisdom applies for everybody, every single person in this planet, then you can uh, kind of get the hint, realize that we all come from the same place. And then we can build from that. And it also, it's, a, it's an analogy of how circumstance plays such an important role in, in our lives. Listen to the dialogue. This is, this is the background. It's the board, when you step on it, it lights, and it, it, you, you play musical notes. So instead of beating your opponent, what you try to do is work with your partner by listening to create melodies, to create music. The foosball is a very nice analogy of how we're all tied together, how we're all linked. So it's a very nice way of talking about how collective decisions are made. These are the dominoes. These are uh, big dominoes that actually a child can, can lift. So the way it works is that uh, the dynamic is about doing the domino effect. And, and that reflects how our actions have consequences, not only for how they uh, project towards other people, but towards our own future. So it's about how when making the habit of thinking before acting, we, we, we kind of gain control over this impulse of acting negatively against another negative effect. So it's, it's how you build a, a personality. Help and ask for help. This, this is not a, a classic, bowl. it's a bowling alley, but it's not a typical bowling alley. What happens here is that the pins, are stick to, they stick together. So when the ball hits, the ball breaks. It's the only bowling alley where the things happen maybe the way they should be originally. But um, these pins actually are helping each other. So it's, it's, an, it's a metaphor for how when we stick together in, in a problem, we achieve uh, much result, better results. And altruism is the basis uh, for humanity. So when we help, we, we humanize ourselves. And when we ask for help, we give others the opportunity to do so. And we also realize our own fragility. feel as a part of something bigger than yourself. This is the grand finale of, of the experience. And here the billiard balls uh, have music. Each ball has a melody. And then when you listen to them all together, they form a composition. So it's also a little bit like life, where we as individuals have our own melodies, but we can also be part of an orchestra. And well, this experience, um, has been successful. It has, it has toured uh, in about 20 museums in North America. And the, the experience has been great. It, it's been a very interesting learning experience. But the thing is, uh, at some point, I felt uh, I hit a, a brick wall. Because museums, uh, they, for example, charge an entrance. And I, I really wanted this to be uh, fr free for the public. 
and also the numbers that uh, we, we could achieve, we knew by the measurements that people are actually changing and we're following some groups along. But uh, the city, I mean, we, when you think of a city, they're immense, they're, they're, they're huge. It's, we're, we're talking about millions of people. So how could we take this to the city? So I tried uh, talking to government officials, to city officials, and it's, it's a very, it's a very difficult task. It takes a long time and it, it, it needs some expertise. So I, I asked for help and it did come from, from a very uh, uh, unlikely place. Uh, it came from a policeman actually, a general of the police force in Colombia. Uh, his name is Oscar Naranjo. And Dr. Oscar Naranjo, he's a general. And when uh, he was actually forming the Institute of Citizen, uh, Latin American Citizenship, uh, we, we spoke and it turned out that they were exactly trying to accomplish the same thing. So we said, okay, let's, let's work together. And uh, he started making phone calls. And you know, this is the sad truth is when, when the artist calls uh, on the other end of the line, it's like, oh, it's the artist again calling, what do I say? You know, it's like, oh, you know, he should get a real job. But when a general calls, Things are different. Pe people kind of tend to pick up the phone a little faster. So, so we, we, we were on our way and uh, we're finally actually going to do the first uh, intervention next month. Uh, the first of hopefully many, many cities. Uh, it's going to be in the city of Cuernavaca in Mexico. We're going to reach over a million people. And uh, that's, that's going to be uh, the, first, uh, the first one of the series. So the way it works, I'm sorry for the, uh, well, the picture, but. Uh, the way it works is uh, all this experience that takes uh, place during an hour in the, in the experience with, with the games, the experience is part of the initiative. Actually, it's, it's, it's already there, but this is how we spread it. And what I did is I took the script of the, of the dynamic, of the one hour dynamic, and I made it into diagrams. And these diagrams, it's, it's like, almost like a joke, it's like 192 easy steps. But they are actually easy, and they, and they are steps. Uh, th let me show you how, how it works. This is a good example. So this is uh, one of the cards, for example. Individuals change with time. Then the point of view can change. Because the same thing can be seen from different angles, which is ambiguity. So you decide the way in which you view things. So you give meaning to the world. So the conclusions, which are the, the light bulbs, uh, they, uh, all, the, all these actions come as conclusions. They're not imposed. It's very different from law, where somebody tells you, okay, this is what you have to do, because if you don't do it, uh, you, you're gonna have a problem. Here, it's your conclusion. So as you walk, you actually uh, think. So that's, that's how it's spread in the, in the floor uh, as stamps. So it's on the streets, it's on any, any place where people converge, like malls or uh, public plazas or, or schools. And we're also using uh, billboards and we're, we're going out like an ad campaign. Uh, I mean, if, if a billboard can sell soda and can sell politicians, uh, why cannot it sell thought, right? And then of course there's uh, media. TV. So what, what this does is these are 20 second snippets that it's in Spanish, of course. So what this does is that these are particular ideas and they're very quick. And they run in like a public TV uh, and all, all, the, all the stations that we can actually uh, get help from. And then finally, there's the, the digital platform. And the digital platform, what it does is that these are citizen tools because it has to do with the power of the citizen. We have to empower the citizen. So, uh, the, for example, the, the feel uh, tool is this place where we can uh, see how our city, how we can feel it, because it, we see how it relates to other cities, not just in the same country, but also are, around the world. Uh, in terms like uh, health, for example, or ecology or, or government. So these, these are indicators. 
And these indicators are measurements, are actual scientific measurements. Are, uh, it's, this is also a very scientific project. Uh, these are, these are uh, uh, values. But what happens when we want to value an individual? This, this phrase, of course, we, we can say it. It's very politically correct. But do we, do we say it because we really know what, what it means or why it is that way? Uh, because when we're talking about values, it's kind of a, an interesting problem. I'm terrible at math myself, but I did solve this equation. And it's, it's, uh, there's only two numerical values that are, can be true uh, to this. And one is zero, which is uh, very true because we all come from nothingness. And we, of course, relate there. It's, it's, it's part of our existence. But the other number is far more interesting. This is our, our potential. So when we, look, when we look around and look at other people and go through the circumstances, when we transcend circumstance and really look at our potential, things start looking very differently, very, very bright. So, um, how do we un un unlock this potential, really? And the only way is by thinking. So I, I really invite you to follow the path of thought. Uh, I, if there's seven billion people in the world, there's seven billion uh, points of view. And the reality is that uh, we're, all, uh, we're all genius. Uh, we just don't know it yet. Thank you.